Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I drew this particular artwork of Bay from Hololive. So, we're going back to my normal format for a bit, because the main goal here is I just want to explore this particular artwork and kind of my plan for all of it. Um, the reference I had was one of, um, goodness, I forget how to pronounce her name. She's the blue-haired goat girl from, um, from uh, Genshin Impact. But there was this, uh, what I think was AI artwork of her in kind of like a comfy, um, uh, a comfy sweater. And I'm like, I like that sweater and I want to do my rendition of it too. So that's what I did. Um, I wanted to kind of add a background because the original uh, thing I was referencing didn't have a background. It was just a boring, white, vague, bleh. And I kind of wanted to step it up and kind of like add a, a cool uh, background. Which, um, this happens a lot, but I sometimes forget to record my background. But just know that my background was just a simple gradient of uh, a sky color and a clone stamp. Not a clone stamp, a stamp of kind of um, a silhouette of power lines. So it wasn't anything really all that fancy. Um, it, it didn't take much effort to make it all, if I'm being perfectly honest. If I'm being honest, sometimes that's okay. You don't have to go super hard every single time. As long as the point gets across, that is all you need sometimes. Um, the original way I did the eyes, and I ended up changing it in the finished product because the eyes kind of look boring in, in the sketch. They, they look a little weird. Um, they're a little small, kind of uh, off skew a little bit. They, they just don't make, they don't pop, if that makes any sense. Sometimes your goal whenever you're doing things like line art or sketching and figuring it out, your goal is to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, if you'll notice, if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you'll notice I've gotten a lot better drawing faces. And I've been super, super proud of that. Um, it's taken almost a year to get to where I've uh, gotten now with faces. And I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to feel really, really confident with uh, how I draw faces and how uh, I do everything. I wish I could say I could teach how to do faces the way I do them, but I really don't do measurements. It really is just muscle memory at this point. So I would like to say there was a there's a way to do faces the way I do other than practice, but it really is just practice. And I know that uh, that kind of sucks to hear. But now we have the uh, basic sketch and we're going to start coloring and like planning out the um, the colors here pretty soon. So, and this is the way I like to do things. I like to uh, draw something, then kind of plan out the rendering. That is a huge um, thing that I do because I, I struggle to visualize things in my head. I have aphantasia, which is weird. It's hard to describe my brain because I can't see things in my head, but I can see concepts, but I can like figure out machinery and like, the other side of things because I can like I don't know it's like my brain's like oh this makes sense the only way this could possibly happen is if it's like this so I can't see things but I can kind of know how they're supposed to be and it, it just it feels like it doesn't make any sense but like it whenever I describe it but like my brain's just weird man it's just autism brain full on autism brain with lacking the ability to actually see things that, that's not a joke, by the way. I do have autism. Um, I was diagnosed with Asperger's back when I was uh, in, I think I was six years old. But the funny thing is now um, I don't think Asperger's is a thing that is medically, it's not, it's not called that anymore. It's just like on the spectrum, but it's like too high functioning to be full on autism. But uh, autism is weird, man. It's one of those things that uh, I've, I've always like, struggled with it most of my life um like i remember growing up in school uh they used to have a what they called code blue which meant steven was running and i had no idea that code blue was a thing it wasn't until i talked with uh my friends who uh were from the school i was at who were like oh yeah we would hear code blue over the intercom and we all go that's uh that's lost he's running again and uh, the funny thing was I, I would run because I would be completely overwhelmed. I would panic and I wouldn't know what to do. And my brain just said, run, just run, get out of the situation. And that, that was how I escaped. 
But I think I'm like most of you out there in terms of you all remember that one teacher who really believed or cared about you. And I can remember all of them. The teachers who knew that I had a problem and tried to help. Um, I had my fourth grade teacher who was super, super, uh, she, was the, she was the one who got me into reading. I'd never liked reading beforehand because with, with aphantasia, you can't visualize things that happen in a book. It's like there's no imagination there. You're just reading words and it's not fun. But she got me into the Magic Treehouse series, which was something I was super, super into. And uh, I don't I don't know what it was about that, but it was just so captivating to me. And there was my first grade teacher, Mrs. Phelps, who really, really tried super hard and through all of my... Um, fits and panic, panicked moments, she never gave up on me. And the funny thing is, I, I barely remember everything that she did, but I know for a fact that she she put in so much work. There was my uh, my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Bright, who uh, was just so calm and caring about me. And there was also the janitor, Mr. Uh, Petrie. And he was the only one while I was running who could get me to stop running because I trusted him so much. He he genuinely knew that I was panicking, and instead of, like, catching me and getting me in trouble, he would actively tell the other teachers, like, there's a time and a place to be mad at me, and we need to wait for me to calm down before we discipline. And I don't know, man. Like, there were so many people who genuinely cared about me growing up. And despite it being really hard for me and my family, like figuring out autism and like getting all this together, um, I, I genuinely feel like I had so many people who were fighting for me. And I, I'm genuinely thankful about that. It was my uh, sixth grade teacher, art teacher, Mr. Baker, who actually got me into art. Uh, it was my friend Josh who introduced me to anime. I had seen anime before, but didn't know what it was. I just thought it was a really cool cartoon and Josh got me into drawing it. And Mr. Baker was the one who encouraged and told me that I should continue doing it. I should have fun. And in the beginning it was, it was for attention. I I genuinely drew because it got me attention. That wasn't bad attention. People praised me for the first time ever in school and in a way, I developed kind of a nasty ego because people would be nice and they would praise me, even if even if the artwork wasn't good. But it it planted the seed of me wanting to be an artist. And it wasn't until after school where I was slowly becoming my own um, person in college where I slowly started to decide that I wanted to be really, really good at it. But... About five years ago, I really started buckling down and learning art, and um, I I went into Arc Nights and started trying to get good. I met some really cool people, that uh, some larger artists who were willing to guide and help me, and then Hollow Life happened, and the rest is history. I just fell in love with art. Um, Other artists, like I, I genuinely wanted to encourage people to love art the way I did and how art did so much for me. And it's kind of like, I've been, I've been improving so much in the past few years and I feel like, you know, I've, I've finally figured things out. I'm starting to figure out life. I'm almost 30 now and things are, things are finally starting to make sense. I just, I'm slowly getting better as a person and as an artist. And it's one of those things that, um, it it makes me really happy. And I know I've been ranting kind of, well, not really ranting, but kind of going off on things that don't pertain to this particular artwork. But um, in a weird way, I kind of wanted to to really just share how much art and the platform that I has that I have means to me. It's none of it's fake. It's I genuinely like am like really. It's just crazy that I was able to get to this level and not only that, but have people genuinely like, like what I do. Um, there, there were, it was, there was so many years that I would, I had like a really bad lying problem. 
because I I couldn't I wanted to impress people. I wanted to stand out. And I'm finally now in a position where I'm I don't I never needed to lie. I was never a bad person. I never needed to show that I was more than what I actually was. And finally with art, I feel like I don't have to pretend to be someone I'm not. But I know this was kind of a weird, like, little story time thing um, that wasn't what the video's intention was. But I do hope uh, you learned something about me and what art means to me and how much it truly matters to me. And I, I really do want to thank you guys. I know I'm not, like, a super big YouTuber or a super big artist online, but it doesn't matter because it, 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 I genuinely just am so happy that I even have what I have. And I hope that never changes. I, I hope I never, um, I, I hope I never become conceited again. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and putting up with my rambling. Thank you so much. And now for the Patreon members. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you at Cooper White Shield, Rubeb, Prismic, Prismatic, sorry. 420 Zidan. Emilin, Beer, Night Angel, Andy Scaldito, Shane, Roxa, Zaret, Dalton Lily, Fainer T. Hager, Tomps Double O, Zip, Matthew C., and Dallas Long. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon, guys.